Now then, what we've got here is an SMA solar grid inverter. It's a fairly early one, comparatively speaking. It's an SB1700. Now, a lot of people will not be familiar with these, but they are very robust. They just keep churning it out day after day after day. And there's a few interesting features apart from they weigh quite a lot. Yeah, but um, I wanted to go through them because, you know, if somebody says, do you want, you know, you're building a solar system and one of these is available and you've never seen one before, you might, you might very well go, oh, I've not seen anything like that. I want something that I'm familiar with, like a solar river or a solace or what have you. But no, these are 1700 watts, so you would put something like five or six panels on it and it would be away, no worries. So they're um, G83 stroke one, so they do take about two minutes to start up in the morning, which is fine. Uh, but they just keep ticking over. But as I say, there's one or two things that um, are a little bit different from the norm. Right, let's crack on and have a look. Right. Cool. There. That is the DC isolator. So if you get one of these, you need one of these with it. Yeah. Although, literally, it's a connection between there and there. Okay. Now, the next thing is those DC connectors. They are not MC4. They're not your standard MC4. They're what's called sun clicks. And an MC4 won't fit in there because there's a flat there and there. Okay, so I'm going to dig into these and show you. These are quite interesting and slightly esoteric. Okay, now the other thing is, let's just move around here. There we go. The mains input. It's one of these, I think they're called Herschel or something like that. Connectors, yeah. And there's four pins. So it's a bit weird. Yeah, but um, you don't actually have to have one of these because if you want to buy one of these off eBay, they're not cheap. Which is crazy as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You could actually take that out, put a gland there and connect your mains direct to the board and I'm going to take the um, this cover off in a minute and show you right so we just remove the four bolts on the out on the front which is easy and there's a, a rubbery sort of seal on each bolt and that should just lift off now I can't remember but I think there's an earth there is an earth there. Can you see that earth? But we'll ignore that. Okay. There we go. There's that four pin connector. And of course, only three pins are used. But it's just spade connectors onto the board. So if you didn't want us to pay, I don't know what they are 12, 14 pounds for that for that plug you could easily just unbolt that take this off and put a gland there and bring the mains cable straight in okay hopefully that makes sense and then the other thing and I'm not sure how we're going to do this is down there can we see not really um, let me move the camera Right, so you can see there, 
Let me just get this earth cable out of the way. There's a DC fuse there. This is some sort of DC board that interfaces with the DC disconnect. And it only switches the negative. So that's interesting. So just let me just see if I can sneak the camera around a bit more. You just about see the the live, the DC positive, just comes straight from the sun clicks connector straight onto the board. Okay. And then the positive, uh, the negative, sorry, comes from the the sun clicks to here. Yeah. So you could, if you wanted to, if you have of a mind, you could change those connectors for MC4 connectors if you want. Although I don't see why you would, because you'd have to then buy four bolt-on uh, MC4 connectors, two negative, two positive, and then you'd still have to buy four uh, MC4, two positive, two negative plugs. Whereas this way you just buy four um, sun clicks. But you can go, uh, for testing, you can go direct to there and there, and there and there. Hopefully you can see that. You can go direct to the negative, and direct to the positive. Okay, so that's sort of interesting. It's easy to get in there. Okay, the sun clicks one uh, connectors, they're not really a problem. Yeah, if you can buy one of these units with the connectors already on it, so much the better. But with sun clicks, you don't have to do any crimping or soldering as I will show you that is the main bugbear that connector but it's not really because you can get rid of it and put your mains cable direct to there through a gland which just bolts through that hole okay I think that'll do yeah there's not a lot more to see in there apart from down here those things yellow there, they are the thermistors. And what happens there is, if the uh, DC voltage is too high, those thermistors heat up and their resistance changes, and then it switches everything off. But we shouldn't be getting anywhere near to um, uh, over volts anyway. Because the rule, rule two of solar panels is never overload, never go anywhere near the, the maximum values of current and voltage. Okay, just as a point of reference, this is an MC4 connector with a, a thready nut there. And of course this came out of an Aurora. But this is the sort of thing I was talking about if you wanted to replace these sun clicks here you would replace them with something like that so if you've got a scrap inverter then you could rob them off that but this is sun clicks right I don't know how oh that's not bad so what you've got is this clip here okay so we've got a cable end here And that feeds in there. Okay, and can you see it's just poking in there like that? Now you've already got the gland knot on the cable. Okay, and then when you deal with this, all you do is you press that down and it clicks. Hence the sun clicks, and then that's really hard clipped together. 
and then on this end you see those bits there and there they line up with there so this goes in there it's a bit fiddly and they click together and then this screws on there so that's what a sun clicks is about so that's a positive and that's a negative here's the label as you see 139 to 320 volts is the maximum power point 12 amps 1550 watts nominal AC out I'd say they're robust okay here's one working this is a an SB 1700 and can we see on the screen good question and you just tap like that and it lights up but we can't see which is about typical it won't focus so should we go down a bit that's probably better okay so we got e total that's today okay so that's e total that's e today and we're on maximum power point that's the mode and we're over 900 watts and the PV was 180 volts and we just roll through that and those are the only screens okay but as I've said these are quite robust if slightly heavy yeah total hours that it's been running yeah and um, with it running at about 900 watts at the moment and it looks like a bright sky we're going to have our um, total for today at about five maybe kilowatt hours anyway there you go and then of course you just got the the warning lights hopefully you'll find this interesting and comments and discussion are always welcome there's the mains input there's the DC isolator with the um, DC in positive and negative behind that cheers for now and these SB inverters and not always red so here's a yellow one it says IBC on it but on the label on the side it actually shows it to be an SMA so just because it's yellow don't get scared about that and I think there were some grey ones as well and then we'll just show you the mounting bracket whilst we're here Actually know how much these weigh but I'm thinking about sort of 12 14 kilos that's the mounting bracket yeah and it screws on the wall there I'm just trying to see what's going on there and there so that goes like that this is the wall and there's a there's a nut there and it lines up with that tag there and you put a bolt through there and I'm assuming that's a 6 mil. Yeah. so if you don't have a mounting bracket you could quite easily well, I'm just trying to work to the viewfinder here you can see that's cranked like that but you get the general principle this is offset from the wall a bit that goes on the wall, that's offset from the wall and so is that. Yeah. 
So, you know, an arc welder and an angle grinder and a few bits of steel and you'd soon have something knocked up for that. Okay. There we go. Right. Leave you to it.